Hello fellow shadows, welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to talk about The Bad Bats, episode 2. And in this episode, it does pick up some place, like someone after, like right after the last episode. And I gotta say, the last episode was great. The first episode was phenomenal. Like, like I said in my last video, I, after the whole Gina Carano incident, I, my standards for Star Wars has gotten drastically lower. It's like this low now. Like, yeah, I might be, a, I might have loved 90% of uh, Season 7 of The Clone Wars. I might have enjoyed Mandalorian. I might have enjoyed The Force Awakens in Isolation. I might have enjoyed, uh... Rogue One. But after them firing Gina Carano, it's not so much them firing her, but how they fired her. I like my standards for Lucasfilms has went way down. And so that has my respect for them. So when the Bad Bats came around and I heard it was directed by Dave Filoni, I said, uh, I like the Clone Wars. I like Rebels. It, like Clone Wars is better, and Bad Boys. I know it's gonna be said like practically right after the Clone Wars. And he did a pretty good job uh, uh, with both. So, as I, I have faith in man, he'll do a bad, uh, uh, be doing a good job. Just I don't have much faith in looks for right now. So, but. Yeah, with my low expectations that were caused by Lucasfilm's stupidity, in my opinion. The first episode knocked it out of the park for me. This episode was pretty good as well. Because we go on the planet where we saw in the Clone Wars where there's that clone trooper that was defected from the clone army who married that Twi'lek and had children with her. I don't remember if he adopted those children, or if they adopted those children, or uh, those children were actually theirs by blood, but we go to the same planet as we met those characters. And the Bad Bats so happens uh, uh set off this trap which causes that defective clone and his wife to come out, and the wife says, Ah, more defective clones. I see you guys again. So, clearly the Bad Bats has uh, interacted with them. And so, we, we go back to their house and the defective clone, I forget his name. He mentions that Rex been, has passed by there. Talking about the inhibitor chips. And Stryker saying... Rex was here, and then the girl also said, Oh yeah, the inhibitor chips, yeah, uh, uh, that's what's been causing the clones to act funny to show on the Jedi, and, I, know there are some rumors that says, if Rex was there, Ahsoka could have been there with Rex, and truthfully, there's, that chance that Rex could have uh, been there. I mean, Ahsoka could have been with him because from the ending of Clone Wars Season 7, well, I say from the Clone Wars just entirely because Season 7 was the last season, we saw Rex and Ahsoka together, like, hang out with each other. So who knows how long it has been, like, if, correct me if I'm wrong, because I have not read uh, any of the novels, really. That's can, uh, based off canon, with the exception of these, which I believe the Jedi Path book is considered Legends, but like the Rebel Files and the other uh, books I have in the series, which is uh, the Imperial Handbook. The Bounty Hunter's Guide and the uh, Book of Sith. I believe those are canon. I don't know. It's confusing. But 
I don't remember them having a certain time frame of how long Rex and Ahsoka stayed in contact with each other, kept uh, hanging out with each other until they went off their separate ways, because Rebels made it clear that it's been years since those have seen each other, but never made it clear how long after Order 66 were they hanging out. With each other, if that makes sense. So, I wonder how long Ahsoka and uh, Rex uh, will come. And I'm hoping we'll see a Rex and Ahsoka cameo in the show somehow. And uh, we see the children, the defective clone and the Twi'leks children to play with the uh, Echo. Not Echo. Hold on, jump cut. I remembered it before I put it up. Omega. <laughs> Omega was playing with the kids, and they were playing Primo's Cats. The, uh, Omega threw out the fence, and the kids said, Don't go out there! Dad explained her why not to go out there, so she naturally goes out there. I have a feeling, if the kids said there are animals out there, Omega properly, like, do use the word properly, loosely, Probably wouldn't have gone out there. Like she did. She probably would have had one of the clones go with her. Because <coughs> the same creature that caused uh, the three tears. I mean, that was attacking Padme at the beginning of the uh, Geonosian arena. Attacked her. Attacked, uh, like, came out with Omega. Trying to practically sneak against Omega. And the clones and the tree lakes saved Omega. And Striker ultimately wants a better life for Omega. So he says to uh, the defective clone, I want her to go with you off world. Because earlier in the conversation, the. Uh, How can I describe this? The defective clone said that he wants to get off world because Rex told him about, about the storm that has been going that will be going. So he wanted to take his family off world to for his family to be safer, but needed some sort of code to get off world, so it makes things difficult. So they has to, the bad Bats has this one plan to get fake codes to. To uh, fool the clone troopers and the Imperials, so the defective clones' family can get off road safely. At the, in the end, of course, they succeeded, but of course, there's a firefight. Things don't go as smoothly as they hope. And Omega, uh, there was five tickets, and Omega was supposed to go with them, and then towards the end, Omega stupidly. Risk her own life just to go with the Bad Batch. And then once they're on the ship, Striker and Omega had this talk saying, uh, Omega saying, I left Camino for a reason. With I left Camino with you for a reason. I want to be here with you. I don't want to be anywhere else. I want to be here with you. And Striker says, you know what, kid? I have a, a lot to learn. And then we just see them staring at each other. And then credits. I'm sorry. But, and this is not really me bashing the show, really. But if they're letting the whole, like, father-child thing in this show happen, like they kind of deal with Mandalorian, why the hell did Obi Wan need some rewrites then? Like from all the uh, all the reports that I've heard, Obi Wan had some rewrites because it felt like a rehash of Mandalorian. Dude, that's the whole point of Obi Wan being at Tatooine for those twenty years <laughs> to practically do what Mando did with Grogu <laughs> in like the two seasons of the uh uh. Mandalorian to watch over baby Luke and to protect him. He not 
Obi Wan won't be in Luke's life like all the time because clearly at some point Owen does not want o- Obi Wan to be around Luke. But still, Disney, still, that's gonna be my that's your whole you're letting the whole father child thing with Mandalorian and Bad Bass, but yeah, you can't have that in. Uh, in the Obi Wan series, seriously, seriously, are you freaking kidding me? You know, it was set up in Revenge of the Sith that that's what Obi Wan has been practically doing the entire twenty years, twenty nineteen years, in between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> so that's my one criticism, but that's not really directed towards the show. It's more directed towards Lucasfilm. But, uh, yeah, this show is great. I like this show. It's better than I expected. I'm enjoying the episodes. Doesn't change how I feel about the whole, how they handled Gina Carano. Which I am planning on making a Gina Carano video. Uh, if not this week, then next week. Uh, cause there's, cause Lucasfilm has nominated her to be, like, Black Best Actress or support main lead or whatever and I I'll somehow I f- sum up how I feel in this video but I'll go into more detail in that the video I'm planning to do later this week I feel like it's bogus how they're going to give her the award not saying that she doesn't deserve it because I think they just she deserves it but the part that's bogus is they fired her over social media that alone is bogus. But even to add on to that, they haven't even rehired her. Maybe they have them not ready to go publicly. And yet, they're going to give her an award to be best supporting actress in Mandalorian. If I was in a chrono, I, w- I would say, screw you, you fired me, especially over. Over uh, uh, social media. Screw you. I don't want your award. Thank you for th- considering me. But I don't want your award. After what you put me through. That's just m- how my thoughts are. But I'll go into more detail of that later in the video. I really had no complaints about this episode. I thought it was a pretty good episode. I'm intrigued. In what episode 3 will bring us. So, if you're watching this, Dave Filoni, you did a good job. Uh, I'm giving Mandalorian a fair shot. And I think... Not Mandalorian. Bad Bass a fair shot. And I think the Bad Bass has 16 episodes in it. Which is way more than... Uh, WandaVision and uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier has in- combined. And those are Marvel's. Yes, Best Stars Marvel. I think that's more episodes than uh, Mandalorian has in each season. Which is two. Anyways, what do you guys think about the Bad Bats? Do you guys like it? Dislike it? Eh. What do you guys think about this episode? Let me know. Comment down below. Love you guys. Have a wonderful day. And may the force be with us all. And be kind to one another. Love you guys. And have a wonderful day. And I hope you guys... By the time I'm recording this, it's the day after Mother's Day. So I hope all of you had a wonderful Mother's Day. And to all the mothers, happy belated Mother's Day. So be kind to one another. Love you all. And I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Later, taters.